Okay, here's what we're fixing to do. I'm going to change the uh, radiator fluid. I'm going to flush my radiator and replace the fluid with new fluid, new antifreeze. Uh, this truck is six years old. It's got almost 60,000 miles on it, and I've never done this. Now, I'm not sure how often you should do this. I've heard somebody say 20,000 miles, which I think is a little bit soon. But uh, me, I I'd rather err on the side of caution than uh, let my antifreeze go to the point where it wouldn't protect my engine. So uh, here's, what I, here's what I got. Some antifreeze. This is distilled water here. I'm going to flush it with distilled water and I'm going to refill it with distilled water and antifreeze to a 50-50 solution. A gallon of antifreeze to a gallon of water. And that will protect me down to 35 degrees, minus 35 degrees in the winter. And uh, I think it gives you a protection of 260 degrees in the summer. And uh, you know, I, I drive everywhere, so it just makes sense to make a 50-50 solution. And here's what else I have, uh, a hydrometer. <clears throat> this determines the level of protection or the strength of your uh, coolant. And, uh, and then I have my uh, BC truck coffee cup that my friend in Croatia, Tomislav, sent me. So let me get in the truck, show you a couple things, tell you a couple things. First, you want to bring your engine up to operating temperature. And then, you want to set your heater up high enough where it will open the valve that controls the amount of coolant that goes in through the heater core. Me, I don't want my uh, fan running high. I just want it on enough to keep the valve open. This is all digital, so I have to have the fan on at least one click in order for the uh, valve to be open. So uh, here we go. And the reason you want to do this when you run the heat up it opens the valve to the heater core and it allows that fluid that's in there to uh, get flushed out also. Otherwise you you know you change you put brand new coolant in there and it, it gets contaminated the first time you open your your heater valve or turn your heater on it gets contaminated with the stuff that was left in there so don't forget to do that uh, number two you want to catch the antifreeze coming out it's uh, poison it's bad for animals it's bad for the ground and uh, you can pour it into the jugs that you use to put the new fluid in and take it to uh, I think most oil change places will take it and dispose of it for you so I'm gonna pop my hood and uh, we'll get started Okay, here's my radiator cap, but I'm not going to move that right this minute. Here's the radiator fluid, the coolant reservoir. I'm going to open that. And then, you got to get down on the ground, up under here, and find the petcock, which is at the bottom of your radiator. And uh, that's where you drain the fluid out. And if you don't have a petcock, you'll have to break free the lowest radiator hose you have and drain the fluid out that way. Alright, it's a little hard to find. Uh, there's my pet cock right there at the bottom of the radiator. Uh, with a red cap on it. So, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you that because it's going to be really messy and uh, I can't hold the camera and run the risk of getting antifreeze on it. So. Uh, I'm going to open that, but if you didn't have one of these, what you would have to do is uh, take the radiator ho hose free and uh, let, let it drain out that way. Alright, let me get a bucket and uh, open this up. Okay, this is the, uh, the coolant reservoir and uh, it doesn't drain out. You could just add water and flush it all out and it'll all mix up and eventually it'll be uh, you know watered down enough where it really wouldn't matter but I'm gonna I have a turkey baster thing here I'm gonna suck that stuff out and then I'm gonna show you how uh, brown it is it's not good
I may have let this go too long. You know, uh, I had a lot of trucks over the years, and I uh, flush my radiators every hundred thousand miles. Well, actually, about every six months, which was about 125,000 miles. And I never had to replace a water pump, never had a radiator go bad, or stop up, or a heater core. But I also used to flush them with Cascade powdered dishwashing detergent. Uh, one of my trucks coolant capacity was 16 gallons so I would put an entire box of Cascade after I drained the original coolant out and filled it back up with water I would pour a box of Cascade dishwashing powder in there and run it for about an hour just let it sit out there and idle with a heater core with a heater valve open and everything and uh, and then I would flush it two or three times after that and I never had, it was kind of costly, you know, going through that much antifreeze, but it was nowhere near as costly as downtime and repair costs, because I could do most of my own stuff, but on the road, I was sort of at the mercy of repair shops, because, uh, you know, I couldn't bring all my big tools with me. And then there's lots of places that won't let you work on their property. Yeah, I can't wait to show you this. This is a uh, brown and ugly looking. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use a chemical or a, or a soap to flush this, but uh, I may have let this go longer than I should have. Sixty thousand miles, they say, every twenty, but I don't know where that figure comes from. You know, maybe it's the antifreeze manufacturers. You know, you can't you can't trust everything you read on the internet. Believe it or not. Imagine my surprise when I heard there was really no such thing as zombies after all the talk of zombies on the internet. I was fully prepared for the zombie apocalypse. Alright, I'm not going to make, make it, i got a long ways to go, so I'll show you what it looks like when I get, when I get this empty. I'll show you the, the coolant. I'm glad I did that. That's a, a lot of fluid that <clears throat> wouldn't have gotten wrenched out. Look at that nasty brown... I definitely let this go too long and you know there's a lot of people that don't realize you have to flush your coolant system you have to do it or else uh, you know you suffer eventual component failures and and component failures and their repair bills are way more costly than uh, you know gallon antifreeze and some water so in view of how dirty this is uh, I'm going to fill this up with a garden hose regular tap water I'm gonna flush it drain it and then I'm gonna fill it up with distilled water to flush the the garden hose water the city water out of it uh, run it drain it again and then I'll finish it off with uh, antifreeze and distilled water and the reason I use distilled water is because I don't like all the minerals and deposits and chlorine uh, getting in my radiator you know a lot of this uh, is aluminum and I don't think chlorine and aluminum uh, agree with each other so that's why you know I'm gonna use tap water just to flush it once but I'll be flushing it right back out uh, the second flush so uh, let me get the hose and I'll do that okay you want to uh, you want to flush this thing under pressure but I'm gonna let it run a little bit run all of the air bubbles out of there and top it off and then put the cap on and run it about oh I don't know 15 minutes that'll be good but uh I'm gonna I'm gonna let this thing run all the air bubbles out of there all right see you in 15 minutes okay that's the first flush and I'm glad I you see how dark the fluid is uh it's still got you know it's still a dark color it's not clear water so the second flushing will uh will make the difference. I'm fixing to drain this, refill it with distilled water this time, uh, run it again for 15 or 20 minutes, drain it, and then refill it with uh, water and fluid. And I'll just bring you back when I'm filling it with the uh, antifreeze and water. 
All right, this is the water from the first flushing. So uh, I'm glad I'm doing this twice. The second time will. The second time it ought to come out a whole lot more clear than that. All right, I'm fixing to fixing to do the second flushing. All righty, I am uh, fixing to pour the antifreeze in. I'm gonna try to do 50-50, but I know that there's still some water left in here, so I'm probably going to use uh, more antifreeze in the water, and I'll run it a day or two, and then I'll take the hydrometer and pull some uh, coolant out and test it and see what strength it is. And uh, if you hear people yelling, it's some neighbors that live out on the main road there having some kind of fight. It's always something. It's, those are the HUD homes up there. Yesterday I was outside here and uh, the lady of the house, you could hear her yelling and it was, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like she's right next door. I'm several hundred feet from her, but when she gets to yelling or they start having fights over there, it's, it's like they're uh, right next to me. Well, yesterday, here's what I heard. Motherfucker, what you mean you're in jail? No, I can't bail you out, motherfucker. It's just motherfucker this, motherfucker that. And uh, I know who it is. It's her little hoodlum son, pants sagging, backwards hat son that's like, you know, nearly 30 that lives with her in the hood home with no visible means of support, but always got gold jewelry and some little Tipperillo cigars. Man, I so want to move out of here. Every day I stay here is one day it makes it harder to sell my property. I'm just surrounded by HUD homes now. This little tiny town. Hard to believe. I don't know what the attraction is to, uh, to this little town of 1,100 people. Alright. I'm going to have to let that got to run it a minute. I got to put some in here. Uh, actually, I'm going to put water in here. I'm putting a gallon in here and I'll put some water in here. And, uh, you know, eventually the two will mix. But uh, I got to run this a minute and let the air bubbles come out. All right. I'm going to take it for a little ride to town. Let me tell you what I'm, my next project is, or a project in the future. This, uh, toolbox whenever it rains or gets dew on it it leaks down the side of the truck both sides and uh, it's white uh, I don't know alkaline paint that comes off of there and just streaks the side of the truck so I'm gonna go to Sherwin-Williams and see if they have a paint that will come close to this here and I'm gonna repaint that toolbox and if they don't I'm also thinking of uh, putting a bed liner in here and I can get a color called sand which is not too far off of this so uh, I just might put bed liner on that toolbox and in the bed and just be done with it but uh, when I come back from town I'm going to uh, put that hydrometer in there and test that fluid make sure it's uh, the right strength be right back Okay, we want to be up around, for the freeze point, we want to be up around 35, minus 35 here. See where we are. I didn't get enough. Actually, it's, yeah, it's right in the right in the neighborhood. Uh, this uh, reservoir back here, this reservoir is low a little bit. It, it sucks them in, so I'm gonna fill that reservoir up, and I'm down a little bit here, so uh, I'm gonna fill it up with antifreeze, not water, and that should. Uh, that should make the difference. It should bring it up right where it's supposed to be. And uh, from now on, I'm going to be a lot more diligent about uh, checking.
changing my coolant. Uh, I had no idea it had gotten that bad. And you know, I'm kind of a stickler for maintenance. I'm surprised I, I let this get that far away from me. So, uh, just a word word to the wise. Uh, coolant is something you definitely have to replace, and you have to replace it far more often than uh, we realize. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them.